nearly made a jumping spider video this week. I have a mantis video I want to put together for you. But this week it's amphipods. So, Courtney and Jesse drove separately. Get here to the pond. Even though we live near each other, we drove about, well, almost an hour. But COVID-19. It's a weird little plant. Oh, I forgot about the shooting range right over yeah, here. Yeah, I know. I figured that would be closed, but not for my guns. Nope. Oh, that plant is... Well, I'm going to take some of that plant. Are you? Yeah, I'm going to set up a little water tank. That's one of my goals for today. I'm going to set up a little water tank with some of the amphipods, assuming we find them again. Uh, I'm sure we will. We have the perfect log for it. The, uh, it's up higher. That used to, we used to walk on this. Yeah, you're right. The water's a little higher. And there she is. Man, she's all geared up. She's not messing around. She's got her amphibian net. You yeah, trust me. She doesn't mess around. But really, if you want to know the truth, she just wants to be home playing Animal Crossing. <laughs> Jesse just snagged an alder fly. Oh, do you feel this weather? It's beautiful. I really brought your A-game there. Huh? Your pink net and <laughs> dropping containers. Uh, well, actually, I brought my A game because I caught this in midair with my bare hands and it's a stone fly. So, yeah. yeah, I did bring my A game. Thank you very much. You've got your A game, your B game, and your C hey, wait, game. Wait, wait, Look wait, at this wait, guy wait. right here. <laughs> <laughs> Shapesinnature.com. Shapes and nature. Pink nature. Go. Let it go for it. He says no. They always look like they're about to sing, don't they? Oh. 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 Yeah. Give it to me, maestro. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. Oh, there's tons of amphipods in here. Yeah? Yeah. Let's show you. Look at this one with eggs. Isn't that, that what that yellow is? There you go. Some. Good to see you guys again. When I moved, I had to get rid of my couple tanks of them. Oh yeah, huh? You had a good, you had a good thing going for a while. Yeah, I did. I'm gonna get another nice setup going again. I feel like that's why we're here, right? This <laughs> one's interesting because it has, yeah, it does. It has eggs on it or something. Let's see I if I can know zoom in on it here. With might, it. Even, oh, it's alive, but. It's, There it is. Thank you. A little diving beetle. Or maybe a water scavenger beetle. You don't want to keep this? Nah. Nah. A little on the small side. Just want to take a look at it here. Yeah, it didn't have. Yeah. 
<laughs> you want a big Searfit, don't you? Who doesn't want a big Searfit? I've been waiting some, for somebody to ask me that question my whole life, Jesse. It's not even, it's not like a big, big one, but it's bigger than like a little bitty one. You don't, don't tuck your Searfit down. It's going to be the biggest. It's going to be the best Searfit I've ever seen. Pretty though. Little flower fly. <laughs> These are just so cool though. Hey, I caught a Searfit. Okay, there's one thing here. This is awesome. This is bug hinge. What are you talking about? <laughs> the great wall, wall of bug. bug. Yes. Bug hinge would be like. It's a big, beautiful bug wall. Bugs, but like faces in the ground. <laughs> Courtney, are you amused? No, she goes, no. I am not amused. No, no, no. <laughs> huh? I am not amused. This pile of debris has been in the middle of this field since the first time I came here <laughs> seven years ago. That sounds about right. Like a, know, all I can think about is that song by Madonna. This used to be my playground. You know that song? She used to be my... I might recognize it if you keep singing it. Uh, you know, I don't think so. <laughs> or I might burn my ears off. <laughs> Listen, I know that I am almost like Madonna. I know. Oh, 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 oh. What did you get? Come on, it's a yellow jacket. No, it's a cicada killer. Velvet ant. Leaf, rock, <laughs> bug. It was a crab spider. Sure, oh. it was crab it was. spider. You got us. You got all of YouTube excited over a crab spider. Oh, it was a cool crab spider. Okay, and that's a gone spider. <laughs> what it is? Hey, there's a blue. A what? Um, hair streak up here. Oh. That's the first butterfly I've seen this year. What are you talking about? We just saw one earlier today. That's the second butterfly I've seen all year. Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't hear you over motorcycles and guns. Uh, did you want trash line arm weaver? Uh, is it an actual trash line? Yeah, that's a trash line. Let's check it out. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh yeah, for sure. It's a male though. Yeah, it's a male. Let's get a closer look at him. Could you? Pop them into your hand again for a backdrop. Nice. Trash line. Orb weaver. Squirrel. Out here. Enjoying the sunshine. In the peaceful, tranquil wilderness. Must be nice to be a squirrel, have all that agility, moving through the trees, living in a three-dimensional world like they do. So there's a bee fly right there on that leaf, dark thing in the middle. They visit flowers and using that proboscis, similar to a mosquito. Mosquitoes are also flies. But these bee flies, they drink nectar from flowers, probably serve a role as pollinators. They often have a dark band on the front edge of their wings. I can get a little closer to it here. You can see how cute and fuzzy they are. There we go. A lot of camera shake because I'm really extended. They see really well, and I have to be careful. But there, we got pretty close. Oh, and then it took off. Let's see if we can get a look at it. This is very interesting. There is a stonefly down there, and its predator, this dance fly, 
we can get the light just right here. You can see. Well, I think I'll collect that into a container so we can see it for sure. This isn't the cleanest container. So I'm going to peek in here. The main thing we're looking at before it flies away is the proboscis on this predatory fly. And what's interesting about these is that the males will often catch. Let's see if we can get the sun just right. What's interesting about these is that the males will catch prey and use it as a nuptial gift for the females. And when they give the gift to her, she will mate with them. I forgot to show you the prey that that dance fly was carrying. This right here, a stone fly. And obviously, Stonefly is dead. Oh, no, it's just barely moving. It was being fed upon. Back to the earth. Back for something else to eat. That's beautiful. Isn't that great? I think that might be in the family Betidae. B-E-A-T-I-D-A-E. That is gorgeous. Isn't that great? I love those wings. That's one of the coolest mayflies I've ever seen. Absolutely. The color is And a really good size amazing. for a mayfly, I mean. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. More shots here of Oregon wine country. First thing we're gonna do gathered some materials here for putting this little tank together and I've got these rocks one display rock I gather rocks on the trips I take I usually bring home one rock and by one I mean two to three from each trip I take these ones here I actually purchased a bag of them they've got little shell particles in them I'm going to give these a rinse before we introduce them into the tank. Pretty dusty in there. All that stuff will be floating around in the water. Nice and rinsed out. I like that sound. Should be good. Another beautiful Oregon day. I'm going to pop this little nano terrarium open here. We've got these rocks all nice and washed now. That's pretty good depth there. Eh, maybe a little too much. Just about like that. Putting in a little sand here. The amphipods will enjoy crawling in between the spaces in those rocks. And I've gathered some plants, decaying vegetation from the bottom of the pond. I'll give you a close look at this. Gonna pop that in there, a little bit of that. It's nice when you have some materials from the native habitat. And then I've got some more sludge here from the bottom of that same pond. You can see these decaying bits of leaves. This one here has actually See, they've eaten away at it so much that the skeleton of the leaf is pretty visible. I'm going to pop that in there. 
see what else we got in here. Some other containers I collected. I see some nice duckweed in there. That will look nice there, floating on the surface. And then the isopods themselves. Got a little bit of bark from the surrounding habitat. Forms sort of a U-shaped tunnel, I guess you could say. I'm going to pop that in there, give them a little bit of privacy, should they like it. And now we're going to add in some water. Go grab that water. Hey, you guys. I can give you guys a really good look at this sweatshirt from Shapes in Nature the other day. Give you a better look here since Jesse's in this video also. And I just love his artwork. I love the stickers that he donates to our contests. And of course, the shirts. Of course, always recommended that you use dechlorinated water. I'm going to pop this cap down here so that I don't stir up too much sediment as I slowly pour in here. And then the next step after this, of course, will be to add the amphipods themselves. And we're going to fill this to just below where the air holes in this container are. Pop this cap out now. Forgot my little knobby display rock that I was going to put in there. A little treasure from a trip. And then I'm going to get a spoon. I'm going to spoon in some of this sediment as well as the amphipods. And then we'll take some close-ups of them swimming in their new home. I'll add some duckweed up there onto the surface as well. I've decided that I definitely want more sludge and decaying matter in the bottom down there. would have been better to add this in before I added the water. And so we're going to have to go through a little waiting period here while this all settles onto the bottom. And now I'm going to add some of the duckweed here up onto the surface. Don't have a lot of the duckweed, but it'll be enough. Might help to purify the water. If the duckweed is doing well up here on the surface, I probably have the lighting conditions right. I have my little source container here. I separated some out from a larger container they were living in. And we're going to put them in here soon as that water settles a little bit more. All that particulate matter there in the water column We'll settle down to the bottom. The water will become more clear. It'll look prettier. And our amphipods are in here, and we're going to take a closer look at them now. You can see that their bodies are laterally compressed. Crustaceans, they are related to shrimp and crabs. And also isopods. Isopods, though, their bodies are flat in the other direction. Come a little closer in here so you can take a close look at these relatives of amphipods. Put this one back at this point into another container that it lives in with some soil over here. 
And these ones, see that they're very thin, but in the other direction. And another interesting thing about amphipods, well, they have two pairs of antennae, but unlike isopods, they have two different kinds of legs. And of course, they swim very well. Three body parts, head, thorax, abdomen. Here in this shot, you can begin to see the compound eye, a little black dot up there behind that very long pair of antennae. A smaller one just swam by. Head, thorax, abdomen. The thorax actually has two different kinds of legs on it. They have some walking legs, but on the back, they have their swimming legs on the abdomen. See if we can get a better shot of that here. You can see that they sort of tuck the ends of their abdomens up and then use those back legs to sort of push off and swim. You can see the sediment there moving behind them. I'm not sure what species this is exactly. They are freshwater, came from a local pond, and I've come to depend on that pond over the years as a source for these things. I had a five gallon tank set up for them once upon a time, and I had that tank for maybe five or six years. Kept it out in my garage. They managed to do well without heat in that room through all seasons might get up to 100 degrees in there on the warmest days of summer and then down towards freezing in the winter months. And the isopods did really well. I had a screened lid on top of the tank and the water evaporated. I never did any water changes in that tank. They were very happy. Just having water added to the tank and I used to sell them on the website. They reproduced over those years decently well. But during my move about a year ago, I discontinued the tank. It had already been dwindling a little bit. And I'm hoping to start them up again here. Now this tank that we set up is definitely not a breeding tank. It's just a small display tank I made for you guys for Teaching purposes, I would definitely recommend a minimum of a gallon, but this would be a good start for them, and they're just kind of fun to observe. I want to get some more of the um, duckweed there that's up on the surface. Didn't gather it like I should have. I was lucky, lucky to have some bycatch, I guess you could say. When I collected these amphipods a few months ago, a lot of them were laden with eggs, sort of yellowish pouches, pockets of them that they had attached to the underside of their abdomens. I meant to make the video for you guys at that time, but so many other videos I wanted to make. Still do have so many videos I wanted to make. I nearly made a jumping spider video this week. I have a mantis video I want to put together for you. But this week it's amphipods, and I hope that you've enjoyed it. You're welcome to ask any questions about them down below. All right, kind of spelled that one, but I was able to get a little bit of interesting video off of it. Going to drop it down now into its new home. See it trapped there in the surface tension a little bit, it appears. They do have ways of slipping down under it, though. I give it a little tap help it. 
right there in the corner. And it's down. And we will now dump in the rest of our amphipods. Make sure we got them all. Yes. And so they'll be swimming around down there. Sediment is still settling there in the tank. See some other little things, maybe copepods moving around there in the water column. I'm going to give this a little turn here, see if maybe we can get lucky and see one of the new residents moving around. Pop our lid back on here and carry it upstairs ever so gently so as not to spill water through the little holes there. Not sure that water actually could make its way out there since it tends to be pretty attracted to itself. Saw one zipping around there by our lumpy rock. There it goes. And good. We get some footage here of how well they swim. That really needed to be part of this video, so glad it made it in there at the last moment. Water is definitely cleared here in the last couple hours. Coming back to take a peek. movement there in the sediment. Other pond organisms. It's kind of like the trash compactor in Star Wars. You don't quite know what's down there. In a little tank like this, you might see something in there weeks later that you've never seen before. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up and please subscribe and hit the little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching.